There have been some fun new acquisitions, and Ben Charrington has said himself that his main goal was to add to the offense. Well, anything that you add to zero is welcome. Good morning to you. Good Tuesday morning. I'm Dan Kovacevic of DK Pittsburgh Sports. This is Daily Shot of Pirates. It comes your way bright and early every weekday. If you're into football and or hockey, I also offer daily shots of Steelers and Penguins where you found this. The offense wasn't, of course, at absolute zero. Can't say that about any lineup that has Brian Reynolds in it, which the one for the coming year presumably will as well. But it was also, collectively, the worst offense we've ever seen in the city of Pittsburgh from the baseball standpoint. Nowhere to run or hide from that. So anything, anything that Charrington was going to do was going to represent an upgrade. The question that I have in continuing our week-long spring training preview is whether or not this lineup will be, you know, good. There's a difference between being better and being actually good. And there's no way to pull off this exercise without actually trying to come up with the kind of lineup that Derek Shelton might. And this is setting aside all, uh, you know, uh, other factors, who's on the mound, what the field is, uh, or, or any of that kind of stuff. This is just putting together the most likely lineup, I think, that you'll see from this team heading into the 2023 season. So hear me out. Don't bite my head off with any of these. None of these are, you know, set in stone or anything like that, to say the least. But I've got O'Neill Cruz at leadoff. I don't know why he seemed to be more comfortable there, but he was more productive, which is what matters. So I'd have him there even if he didn't like being there, but he very much seems to like being there. Is that a waste of power? Uh, Yeah. Yeah. Because especially when I get to my number nine, you'll see that it's not someone who's going to get on base like ever. So it's something that you might want to consider or reconsider. But let's just put him there and, and think of this more from the standpoint of who are the nine that they're putting out there, almost regardless of the order, but in order for fun. Brian Reynolds is going to bat second. Key Brian Hayes will bat third. Now you're going to need Key to, you know, put a little more pop into his bat than what he's had really over the past season and change. Uh, That's not easily forecast. It requires some hope. It requires uh, finding out more about the status of his health, his back, his wrist, various other issues that he's had, and he's got to stay on the field. Four, I've got, I've got Carlos Santana here. He's a DH. He's a guy that's put into a position and been put into a position where he's driven in runs. Uh, I have no problem with seeing him there on a regular basis. This lineup isn't going to have a true cleanup hitter by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, at five, I've got either Kutch or G-Man Choi. But both will be in the lineup. Choi's going to be at first base. Santana will be the DH. Choi's a really good defensive first baseman. Uh, regardless of how you do whatever it is that you want with these guys at four, five, and six, and heck, I could throw in Jack Sawinski or Rodolfo Castro into that mix as well, depending on how they mature, or in Sawinski's case, whether the game is at PNC Park where he can hit a zillion home runs or somewhere else where he can't. Uh, so there are variables in here, but my seven and eight are Sawinski in whatever order and, and uh, Castro. And the nine is Austin Hedges, who is a, a terrific defensive catcher who can't hit to save his life and won't get on base, which was what I was referring to earlier. So you hear it. You can go through the names and again, you can shuffle the, you know, the order however you wish. But what you've got there, by and large, first and foremost is, yes, it's better than last year's. But no, it's not much better. Uh, It's just not. You're going to have a little bit more pop than the almost zero pop that the lineup had last year. 
And that additional pop, meaning in addition to what Reynolds would bring you, would be Cruz playing a full season, Castro getting more playing time. I don't know if he'll keep a starting job, but he'll get more playing time. Maybe Sawinski finds a way to be steadier between home and road and puts a few out of other ballparks in addition to Pittsburgh's. And then Santana and Choi are both guys, particularly Santana, who can put the ball over the fence and or hit it hard. And finally, not to be forgotten, is Kutch. And Kutch has had some statistical drop-offs, but home runs haven't been among them. Uh, He was hitting a bunch of them in Philadelphia. He hit 17 last year in Milwaukee. Now, those are both hitter-friendly parks. They're friendlier than what PNC will be. But let's remember that Kutch has also hit a lot of home runs at PNC. It's... It's not exciting. It doesn't have a ton of uh, ceiling, for lack of a better term. Meaning, if you were to mix, let's say, Jihuan Bay in a little bit more often, and if he were to run up a pretty good on-base percentage, a pretty good splattering of hits through the now banned shift, and he gets on base and he does some running. You see what I'm saying here? Now you've got, okay, here's a little bit of a higher trajectory for this. Now, who would he be replacing to do that? It would obviously be Sawinski, or he would take some of Kutch's at-bats, or for that matter, he could come in and take some of Castro since he can also play second base. I, I want some other variables in this mix. I want someone else to step up in spring training, a younger guy, and say, hey, here I am. And I'm not talking about the obvious guys, meaning the kids, the prospects. You know, Andy Rodriguez is going to have a terrific spring training, and everyone's going to get super stoked about him and demand that he comes up right away. He's not going to. Uh, Henry Davis could do that. Nick Gonzalez could do that. Leo Verpaguero could do that. None of them are coming up. So for this lineup, For this lineup, it would be nice to have Bay be the one who really shows well in spring training. Because this this group of nine that I read to you, yeah. Okay, when we come back, J1Q. This portion of Daily Shot of Pirates is brought to you by our friends at North Shore Tavern that's directly across Federal Street from PNC Park. It's home of Steak on a Stone, an eating experience, underscoring the word experience. The steak is brought to you partially cooked on an 800 degree stone and you do the rest. It's a ton of fun, it's a great meal, and it's a baseball atmosphere like no other in Pittsburgh. North Shore Tavern, right across Federal Street from PNC Park. Today's J1Q comes from... Bill, who says, I think Derek Shelton is a lousy manager, although he hasn't had much to work with. He doesn't know how to handle pitchers. He goes by analytics way too much and yanks his starters way too soon. He allows a star relief pitcher to risk injury by throwing 50 pitches on a team that's going to lose 100 games. Look at consistent teams. and They have winning lineups. I'm not sure the Pirates had the same lineup twice in 162 games last year. Bill, my friend, I am grateful to have you as a listener. You are flailing all over creation here, okay? I'm going to try to put this in a polite way. Analytics are not anyone's enemy. If you don't understand or haven't looked up or you know followed through on every acronym that's out there, join the party. No one's done that. Not the most advanced Sabermetrician has gone through every single stat and understands what every little WCR plus this or that means. I don't. But I also understand that math isn't the enemy. 
Math isn't the enemy of anything any more than science is. All we're talking about here are numbers and or facts. And looking at those numbers and or facts and utilizing them to make arguments, to take a stance, to maybe try to debunk a certain thing that a baseball uh, team or player or, yeah, the manager has done, there's nothing wrong with that at all. And you'll find that I'm not particularly friendly to anyone who's just yelling at the clouds over the existence of them. It just, it it doesn't, well, (laughs) to make a pun here, it doesn't add up for me. It just doesn't. So if you want to criticize Shelton for going by his analytics and removing the starter whenever the starter is, you know, shown to be by the analytics to be wearing down or whatever it is, but at the same time, you want to rip him for leaving Bednar on the mound for 50 pitches. And I know you're talking about the game in Los Angeles, which was the antithesis of following the analytics. What point are you even trying to make here, my man? It makes no sense. It doesn't. Here it comes again. Add up. The one thing that you said out of all that that had me nodding was right at the beginning, which is that we don't have any idea what kind of manager he is. Because he was following orders and he was doing it dutifully and quietly and as professionally as you possibly can, excessively so, in my opinion. I thought he went along with some stuff way too easily that he probably should have been pushing back on. But he did that, and he did it for three years. And they lost your hundred games and whatever else, but this was what management wanted. They wanted him to run the team the way he did and to make sure that Josh Van Meter still somehow got in a hundred at bats before they cut him. That's that's what he was being asked to do. Now, can he be some big game manager? Can he be the guy that takes them to the next level? You said it yourself. We have no idea. How could we? He hasn't had anything remotely resembling a competitive roster. And of all things, you chose the sweep in Los Angeles as your as one of your negative examples. Look at the three lineup cards that he and Don Kelly filled out that week at Chavez Ravine. And then look at the three that Dave Roberts was able to write out for the Dodgers and ask me how in the world the one that Shelton and Kelly wrote out ended up not only sweeping, but dominating the Dodgers, outplayed them in every facet. Don't take it from me. Roberts said it after the series. So did Mookie Betts. So did the L.A. media. I understand it was just three games out of 162, but that's what you chose as the negative example. That just means you don't like him. If you don't like him, say you don't like him. I'd much rather just hear honesty. I appreciate the question. I appreciate all questions that come this way, including when I respond like this. I appreciate everyone who listens to Daily Shot of Pirates. We will be back with another one tomorrow, continuing the whole spring preview thing. Mm-hmm.